Okay, my beautiful friends, here we go. Another Friday is, well, just about to end. And we're closing this beautiful day together. I love this part. I really do. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a really good mood right now. Anyway, it is uh, still Friday, as I said, January 27, 2023. I'm in a good mood for a lot of reasons. Number one, honestly, is all you guys and girls. Um, I love being here with you. I really do. There were so many times I wanted to stop doing this. I, I really wanted to quit. I just, you know, this whole thing just gets to me. And you know, once in a while, you know, maybe just once in a while, <laughs> you see me flip out. I don't think I'm going to flip out today because, as most of you already know, I'm going drag racing today. I've been waiting for this since the last year when the track out here closed for the winter. They're reopening today. It's opening day. Got my car on the trailer. I'm ready to go. But you, my peeps, you come first. So we got to get this out here. Uh, let's talk you and me. So this market, let's talk about this freaking market here real quick. Here, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to let you in on a secret. I don't think it's much of a secret, but I'm going to let you in on it anyway. It really does appear that this environment is setting up. If things continue the way they are, okay, that is an expanding war, more cash to finance this war, uh, more, more interest rate suppression from here to kingdom come, whenever that may be, a, a weaker dollar on a relative strength basis, and, and the illusion of stability here, people, in the debt market. And if crude wants to play, we had crude oil fell today. This market is going higher, a lot higher. And I'll tell you something else, in case you don't know. The economy is in free fall. The consumer is, is, is evaporating, okay? An entire class of people are being eliminated. But that does not mean, and don't even think about that there's any connection whatsoever. I've been telling you this since like forever, between this freaking stock market and the economy. There's, there's no connection here. Okay, globally, look, look this up for yourself. Don't take Greg Manorino's word for a damn thing, all right? The global economy is contracting at its fastest pace in history uh, as the consumer gets destroyed, uh, carrying their highest debt burdens they've ever carried. And this mechanism is assuring that the vast majority of this population is going to be pushed into the lower rung of society designed to do that and make them dependent on the system. As this plays out, as war expands, as more funding for wars and weaponry and everything else you can dream about expands, you're gonna see the market rise. That's it, that's where it's going here. We know what to look at. We're watching the freaking drivers. We don't sit there <laughs> and, and foam at the mouth looking at you know the Dow Jones Industrial Average. No, we don't do that. What we do, the smart people look at the drivers of the market, and right now they're looking beautiful. They could not look better. Why? Because it's, 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 it's the circus act of central banks in here buying it all. They're buying it all, and they're buying the market too. Duh. I think we all know that. Anyway, so that was part of the economic news that we got later in the day, that consumer spending is dropping and the economy is slowing. By their own words, this is a Greg Manorino, okay? What is the Fed trying to do? Why is the Federal Reserve... It, it, pulling off this scam that they really want to control inflation. They're going to do that by raising rates. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it's beautiful. I told you from day one it wasn't going to work. Hasn't worked yet. The pace has slowed. But has inflation stopped rising? How about no? It's still rising. I'm going to let you in on another secret here, which will elaborate on Sunday when I do my markets look ahead. We're going to hear from this freak show, the, the Federal Reserve and the the... the the thing, the it, whatever, ugh, I want to vomit when I think about friggin' Fed Chair Yellowstein Powell. We're going to hear him, and he's going to read the questions. Oh, um, um, oh, you, sir, uh, what's your question? Oh, this is what it says. This is what I'm supposed to answer you. <laughs> Come on, man, this is almost, it's a freak show. You all know that. But anyway, so what's going to happen here? I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Here we go. You ready for that? 25 basis points. That's what we're getting here at the next FOMC meeting next week. Uh, I can't imagine this going another way. 
I mean, if you really honestly look back on my calls with regard to the Fed, I think in all the years that I've been doing this, I've been wrong three times. Three. So even if I'm wrong this time, there'll be four in like 100 calls. I mean, it's just insane. But that's where we're going here. And then it's going to be whatever comes out of its mouth. Um, you know, whatever it, it, it wants to, it, you notice my it. It's not a human being. It's a thing. Whatever it wants to try to convince you of, and you know, look, it's just, there's no accountability here. That thing, Powell, could stand up there and lie, which he always does, all of them. Every single Fed president is a deceiver, a liar. Um, you know, they, they, they can't tell the truth no matter what. They have an agenda. The, the Fed and the, the people that run this organization, their central banks around the freaking world, they don't care if they destroy the world. Okay, that's what they're trying to do. Central banks must destroy the global economy and its citizens to fulfill their goal, to be the lender and the buyer of last resort. This has been their goal since day one. Don't believe me. Read The Creature from Jekyll Island. There's so much information out there about central banks, why they were started, the real reason. Why didn't we need, did we really need a central bank? Why is it that our forefathers who built this nation did not want a central bank? What do you think? Because you see, these men back then, they were pretty damn smart. They built the freaking country. We, the people, are the ones that gave it away by allowing the central bank to take over the system here. Once they had, when central banks got a hold of the financial system, and then when we went on to the petrol dollar and the fiat monetary system, it was over. And central banks had a lock on the throats of the people of the world. And this is, this whole thing is just going to accelerate moving forward as an entire class of people is literally exterminated. Exterminated like bugs. You and I, we're nothing but a means to an end to these people here. I don't think there's a person alive that despises central banking more than this guy. This, and maybe you, I don't know, but this is a curse upon the earth. I spoke about this earlier uh, in my um, live midday report. I hope you caught that. And yes, I will be there again on Monday doing it 10 a.m. 10 a.m. when? Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, so you know the game. The game is, and they're going to continue to play it, going back to the Federal Reserve, raising uh, their overnight rate by another 25 basis points. Okay, inflation is going to continue to rise. There's no way to stop it. There is no. There's never been a way to stop this. For those of you that have been with me for any length of time, I've explained to you. It's a very simple equation here. Okay, central banks, the Fed has. They have been on a binge since the last meltdown, flooding the world with with fiat currencies and in every imaginable uh, denomination here. Okay. And then they want you to believe that they had no idea that at one point all of these extra bills in whatever form they exist were going to start chasing the same or, in the case of today, a lesser amount of goods. They had no idea that was going to happen, but you and I knew because we've been talking about it for freaking years. Of course they knew. This is a setup. It's a game that they're playing. They're setting the stage for an entire new system. And you can't make any of this stuff up if you want to. Hey, you know, I was thinking about something. So we understand right now that you got, <laughs> and I'm laughing, but I shouldn't be laughing because it's not funny. Um, these major corporations laying off tens of thousands of people. And this is, mark my words here, okay? And I'm telling you ahead of time, this is going to accelerate moving forward big time. All right, you're going to start to see hundreds of thousands of people uh, lose their jobs. This is the mechanism. This is what the Fed's attempting to do. Because remember, in order to control inflation, people have to lose their jobs right out of the mouth of Federal Reserve President Mary Daly. Okay. So this is their plan. She let the cat out of the bag. And remember, I don't know how the cat got in the bag, but I'm letting it out. It doesn't like it in there. But um, so the narrative was labor shortages. There's labor shortages. There's labor shortages. Do you remember that narrative? Well, if they were, if that's true. Why are tens of thousands of people now being laid off? And why is this going to accelerate? Because there was a labor shortage? Really? You really believe that, huh? No. This is the, law, the lie that they sell, part of the propaganda. Part of the temporary and transitory and peaking and every other freaking thing they want to throw at you. But you and I were too smart. See, they don't realize that there are people out here that have a functioning brain. Yeah, like you. Uh, most people, 
they're brain dead. And they know that. They got them all by the throat. And even if they don't got them by the throat, they're trying to make these people with a brain, this is the saddest part, dependent on their system. More dependency is what they need, central banks, and want. They run the show, and everything else is just just nonsense on the side of that. Anyway, going, to, going back to this market real quick. Uh, volatility was the name of the game today. Stocks all over the place. Um, Anyway, what are you going to do with that? It's because the market's going up, in my view. If they keep those dynamics, which I outlined in the beginning of this video, um, on track, and I, I believe that is going to happen here, unless something works against it. And I, I don't know, anything can happen. Unless something directly works against it. You know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Well, same thing. Something has to act against this to change it. Uh, commodities today did not fare well. Okay, they've had a nice run lately. And I, I, as I said, look, you, why are we holding commodities, hard assets, all this stuff? Because eventually this whole, whole, this whole freak show is going to change. It's going to change big time. Risk on, turns risk off. Cash just moves. It doesn't fly away to money heaven. It just goes into other assets. And you all know that, people. No one knows this better than you. Crude oil took 2% uh, loss today because of concerns that the global economy just might be slowing down. It might be. We don't know, of course, we know, but you know, they're gonna sell you some some line of nonsense. Anyway, um, cryptocurrencies did, doing okay, Bitcoin over 23,000. Uh, so many of you hate cryptocurrencies. I don't I don't know why you like the dollar, but you don't like cryptocurrencies, I don't know. What can I tell you? I'm not, I never tell anybody to go in on any, all in on anything here, but I do believe you need some in your portfolio. Um, but you do what you want. Look, I just come out here and I just, I tell it. I tell things the way I think they are. Then it's up to you to kind of make up your own mind with this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I I think people like know the truth when they hear it. Harking back to my my old friend Greg Hunter, who I've written to dozens of times, dozens of times. This man does not practice what he preaches. Just so you know, he claims to be this big Christian guy. I for, forgive. He this guy can't forgive nothing. All right? I don't even know what I did wrong. All right? I just said I told Greg that I thought he was a little biased to one side. And as a person that's reporting uh, on what's going on, he should have a more middle of the road view. And he went ballistic on me and he just can't let it go. Poor guy, I feel bad for him. That's a burden he has to carry with him. Whenever we can't let something go, whenever we can't forgive something for someone, even if that person may or may not have even been guilty of it, you carry that burden. It's not the other, the other guy, it's yourself. This is why, you know, some great people throughout history have said, you know what? When someone says, apologizes, you should forgive them. You should let, you should, you know, maybe take a different perspective on things. Anyway, people look, well, that's pretty much where, uh, where we're at now. So I'm going to end this video and we're going to bring it in together. All right. You ready? Bring it in. Seriously. Love each other. Care about each other. Be charitable. In about an hour and a half from now, I will be screaming down a quarter of a mile in probably around 10 seconds. At least I'm hoping so. And we'll see. I'll, I'll let you all know what happens. All right. The last run with that car was an 11.0. Did some work to the valve train. We'll see what we're doing here. But I've got my Hemi Cuda, which I'm going to be running that thing too soon. That's going to be deep in the tens. All right. Look, again, please share the video. Love all of you. I'll see all of you on Sunday for my Marcus look ahead. Uh, and that's all. All right. I'm out here.